On October 7th, my heart was broken when I became aware of the atrocities occurring in our world. Bombings, kidnappings, mutilation, murder. I'm reminded that not all Jews and Israelis are their government, just like not all Palestinians are Hamas. The intention of this episode is to highlight the civilians that are hurting at the unfolding of this international crisis. This episode was recorded on October 15th. Viewer discretion is advised. Israel is at war. We have active fronts of fighting in three different geographical areas. The Hamas took even more hostages than Airstrikes demolished over 3,700 residential buildings. Residents are essentially living on the front lines. This is already the single largest loss of life in a single day in Israeli history. So this will loom large now. Welcome to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with Emmanuel Acho. Though our world is at war, may we never lose our appetite for humanity. Real hurt, real pain, real people. I'm joined now by Israeli-born Noah Tishby, daughter, mother, author, a woman who's dedicated her life to serving the Jewish people and community, Israel, a land which she loves. Noah, what are you feeling right now? It's been the worst week of my life and the worst week of the entire world Jewish community and Western civilization should people understand exactly what's going on. Um, it's everyone's worst nightmares, um, generational trauma recreated. It's like all the horror stories that the Jewish community had heard about um, of mothers slaughtered in front of their children, children being burnt alive, handcuffed behind their backs, families burnt in their homes. I mean, horror stories that we've been raised with are happening in reality, and not just they're happening, they're, they're filmed and presented to the world. So what's happening right now is gonna take decades to heal, if at all. How is, how is your family? Because obviously you have family over there. How are they? Every single person I know, know people that were slaughtered in the most Brutal of ways. My nieces and nephews are going to like double, triple, quadruple, quad, quadruple funerals every day. They know multiple families that have been that have been affected by this. Yeah, where? How do we get here? On Saturday morning, uh, Israel time, six thirty in the morning, Israel time, eight thirty p.m. Uh, Friday night uh, in the West Coast. Um, Israel was surprised by a terrorist attack by the terrorist organization Hamas, which has taken over Gaza, the Gaza Strip in 2006. They started launching thousands of rockets, but that was actually hiding a ground invasion operation. So the numbers, the recent numbers that I heard is 3,500 terrorists um, invaded Israel on trucks, on motorcycles, on paragliders, like gliding into Israel, armed to the T, and conquered, invaded all these towns, went one house to the next, and slaughtered every man, woman, and child that they can find. This is the most Jews that have been slaughtered since the Holocaust. In one day, yeah. How does hearing that make you feel? Like, what is your response to that ugly reality? You know, after the Holocaust, the Jewish community, we had a, a saying, uh, never again. We worked very hard to, re, um, to, re, you know, to, to rebuild the Jewish community, um, and we kept saying never again, and, uh, and it happened again. You feel like this is triggering that same emotional response. A hundred percent, and it's not just me. There are 15 million Jews in the world. It's a very small number that people are not aware of. People think that there are a lot more Jews in the world. 
but the world, the Jewish community, is 0.2% of the world population. Every single Jew around the world is having nightmares right now. Every Jewish family has a story of persecution, extermination, expulsion, uh, uh, discrimination, murder, every Jewish family. What's been the, the hardest part for you through all of this? Is it communicating oh. these events even to your young son? Is it communicating them to loved ones? Like, mm. is it trying to go to sleep at night with horror thoughts in your mind? What's been the hardest part? I have not been sleeping through the night. I have been, you just, I've never experienced anything like that. Like you fall asleep and you just jump like that because you have these images and just, just these images of what actually went down. Um, I think, honestly, one of the worst thing for me is the lack of understanding that the world has to what went down and the support that that barbaric terrorist organization is getting. As I've seen this sentiment from, from so many of the, my Jewish brothers and sisters, it, the Jewish community, they stood by the LGBTQ plus community. They stood by the black community. What do you hope that other marginalized communities would do for and with the Jewish community right now? This is a great question and I don't wanna be making anybody wrong or making anybody feel bad right now. Historically, we've been on the side of human rights. Rabbi Heschel marched with Martin Luther King on the bridge in Selma, literally front line. Uh, the Freedom Riders were slaughtered. There were Jewish people in the Freedom Riders. Like the, the, the Jewish community has been there for oppressed communities throughout the generations in the past decades. We have been feeling extraordinarily alone. You cannot say that you are a person that is supportive of human rights, women's rights, democracy, freedom of speech, LGBTQ plus rights, minorities, and stand with Hamas. At this very moment, do you as a Jewish woman walk around scared? Um, It's, it just it just pains me to say that yes like I tried not to and I but I haven't left the house in a week have you given yourself the opportunity to feel um, <laughs> I try not to why because then I'll fall apart you have two people groups communicating to the world don't fall on the wrong side of history but they're communicating to fall on different sides of history. How is someone like me supposed to adequately assess what side of history to fall on? You don't have to love the Israeli government. You don't have to agree with every uh, action of the Israeli government. The only thing is that Israel has the right to exist. That's literally the line. Why do some argue that Zionism is racist, Zionism is oppressive, Zionism is colonialist. To be Zionist is to hate and oppress another group of people. So to ask the question, why is Zionism oppression? I would ask it, why is there no Palestine? Why is there no Palestine? We've been dying to have a Palestine for a very long time. The majority of Israel at times were like, all right, let's just, Let's just find a solution here. There's a two-state solution. You guys mostly are living here. We live mostly living there. Let's divide it. Every time, and I'm saying this as clear as day, and please don't take my word for it. Look it up. Every time there's been an offer for a Palestinian state, they said no. Every time. What do you feel when you hear the word <sighs> free Palestine? Absolutely free Palestine. Free Palestine from Hamas. Absolutely free Palestine. Let me say one more thing, right? Gaza is not occupied by Israel. I'm gonna say it again. Israel does not occupy Gaza. Israel does not occupy Gaza. When Hamas declared war on Israel on October 7, they declared war first of all on themselves because there's not gonna be any more Hamas. That's number one. And number two, and that's the thing that people need to understand, they declared war on their own people. Hamas is sacrificing Gaza and sacrificing Gazans. 
So is it possible to be pro-Palestinian and anti-Hamas? Absolutely. There are a lot of people that are like that. By the way, it's also possible to be pro-Israeli and pro-Palestinian, which is what I am. Wouldn't the answer be freedom? What do Palestinians want? Wouldn't that answer Absolutely. be freedom? Absolutely. What did we do in Gaza? That's what Israel did in Gaza. We're out. There you go. The keys. You got the keys. Israel left in Gaza greenhouses, houses, fields. You know what Hamas did to those greenhouses and fields and houses? They burnt them. I'm not kidding. We want freedom for Palestinians too. I can't say it in, too, in so many words. There were peace offering given to the Palestinian people many times throughout history. And they kept saying no. Hamas burnt down the infrastructure that Israel left. Israel go, here are the keys, get your freedom, enjoy, create then a state. Then why view Israel as the oppressor? Exactly. I'm asking you. It's a great question, Emmanuel. Is that people need to come to term and understand that they see the worst of Israel. Israel can almost do no right. With anti-Semitism, with anti-Jewish racism, it's a little bit more tricky because what you look at a Jew, you don't necessarily only look down at a Jew, you also look up at a Jew. So anti-Jewish racism also sounds like the Jewish people, they control all the, you know, they have the control, of, they control Hollywood, they control the money, they control the banks. When you walk around and you have that unchecked subconscious bias where you think, well, then the Jews control the world. They control the American media. They control the American government. When you think that, you will believe the worst of Israel immediately. So when you hear, well, Israel's a colonial state, obviously, and you have a subconscious bias about the Jewish people, you're going to believe it. What can someone who's unaffected, neither Jewish nor Palestinian, what can someone like me do in this moment to support someone like you? So the first thing is literally as simple as check in on your Jewish friends, be vocal on social media, do not allow for this equivocation of there, there, there's no, there's no, this is not, you can't compare these sides at all. And lastly, in your mind, how does this end? I have no idea how this war ends. I really don't. I, but I can tell you this. In the Jewish community, we have been through such hell in the past. And sadly, we know how to get through this. So I see already stories of unity and help and friendship and community all over the world that are helping the, the Jewish people and helping Israel. The Jewish people are extraordinarily strong. They, we say this a lot, like, but it's true. Am Yisrael Chai, the people of Israel live, and we're gonna keep living. Well, Noah, thank you for your courage. Thank you so much Thanks for having for... me, and thank you for speaking up, and thank you for being an ally. Of course, of course, it's an honor, it is. And thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with Emmanuel Acho. Remember, justice will not be served until those that are unaffected are as outraged as those that are affected. So do your part to seek and fight for and find justice. We'll see you next time. On the next episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with Emmanuel Acho, I'll be sitting down with Palestinian American, Nora Erekat. You do not want to miss it.